Good morning. Uh, we are in next plane 1206, Beta 6. They uh, had a problem with AMD cards on Beta 5, and uh, so they did an emergency uh, release on Beta 6. So the only thing Beta 6 did was fix some... Uh, it sounded like it was near 100% of the people with AMD cards would get a crash right on startup. <laughs> so so uh, they did an emergency uh, release, and um, so that's why we're on 6. So uh, we are in um, Chester County uh, Airport, uh, Carlson, and uh, basically we're a little bit uh, north of uh, Philadelphia. So uh, I'm continuing on my uh, on my trip uh, around the uh, around the border of Pennsylvania. So uh, so we've went down the uh, western border. We've went across the southern border, and uh, now we're on our way up the uh, up the eastern border. So uh, so the uh, number of miles we're going to fly today is a little under a hundred, about ninety eight or something like that. So. We'll see how long that takes, and uh, so the weather looked pretty good, so uh, go ahead and decided I'd fly today, and uh, we'll kind of kind of go from there. So, so pull this guy out of the way. I'll need him in a little bit to, uh, to put the flight plan in, but uh, so uh, so this I am using the uh, the Open XR option, and. Uh, and so far, everything uh, everything uh, is working quite a bit better than uh, than in previous uh, betas. Uh, the only thing I found is the uh, the animation of my buttons is a little bad. So if I push in the top button, let me get up here. So if I push in the top button, you can see that button. Let me get it closer to me. That button's going in and out. Now, if I put my my thumb on the uh, on the um, thumbstick there and push down, the X button's going in. So, uh, so we got a little mapping problem going on with the uh, um, with the animation. But uh, but as far as the buttons actually working, now they they work. They're fine. I mean, so but it's just the animation that's got some problems. So uh, okay. Uh, so I don't think I need anything else. So let me. Uh, we'll go next. OBSM sound. Alrighty, OBS Sim Sound. Let me, uh. Yep, that's working. Yep. Check. Mod mic in position. Yep. Check. OBS mod mic sound. One, two, three, four. Yep. Check. OBS streaming. There we are. Check. Over toolkit windows. Yeah, I got chatty here. Check. Fly with Lewis sounds script. Yeah, that's here. Check. A by tab plugin. That's here. Check. Rep weight and balance. Well, let's see what we got. Show weight and balance. Okay, so we got 17. That's good. I'm happy with that. Check. Rep maintenance log. So let's uh, make sure we don't break anything. Show maintenance report. So that all looks good. Okay. Looks good. Good morning, Hawker. How are you doing this morning? I'm doing quite well. Good. Check. Two brakes. Test and set. Three fuel selector. Both. Four fuel shutoff valve. On. In. 
Six Beacon. So far it is. We'll see how it goes. Uh, I've, uh... On. Yesterday. Seven avionics switch. Off. Eight master switch. Uh, yesterday I did a really quick stream kind of going over my uh, OVR, uh, my OpenXR settings. And uh, I had two, uh, two errors with my base stations. No idea what, uh, what that was all about. So. On. Hopefully better Nine today. throttle. Open one fourth inch. Ten mixture. Idle cut off. A auxiliary pump. On. B mixture. Rich until three to five GPH then cut off. C auxiliary pump. Off. Twelve starter. Engage. One ignition switch. Start. Two mixture. At engine start. Rich. Three engine. So, uh, for some reason, uh, it says volts. So I'm going to turn that off, turn it back on, and uh, then it goes away. So, it's looking for me to have a little more uh, RPM. RPM 1000 RPM. Four oil pressure. Check. Five mixture. Leaned max. Six flaps. Retract. <laughs> Seven avionics. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, it's, uh... <laughs> yeah, it is, uh... Oh, yeah. Eight instruments. Same way. <laughs> okay, what do we got for elevation? 660, so... This guy needs to be a little bit higher. Uh, right about there, it's good. Uh, right on 24, yeah, that looks good. Alrighty. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I can't, I can't do it. I, I, I should say, I, I won't say I never, I never do, but normally it's only for testing. In other words, if, uh, like, especially like if a new, uh, a new version of X-Plane comes out, and I want to just test the, uh, just the stability. So, in other words, I just kind of want to just fly for a really long time. And, uh, and just, just basically have it running in the background. Then I, then I won't be in VR. I'll put it on a 2D screen, put the autopilot on, give it a heading, let her fly. And, uh, so that's about the only time I use a 2D screen. Or, if I'm, like, uh like writing some code and stuff i don't write code in vr that's uh we're not there yet so uh the new headset uh my new uh, big screen beyond that may be a possibility i don't know that yet but uh but generally nah if i'm gonna be writing code uh i got to uh, uh i do that on a on a 2d screen so and i after the stream that's what i gotta do i gotta write uh i can't get uh I tried to run the uh, data reference tool in this version of X-Plane. Nah, it's, it's, an, uh, it's okay if I don't go in VR. Man, as soon as I go in VR, nah, it crashes. So, uh, I sent a message to Lee, kind of like, uh, hey, buddy, this isn't working. And uh, so, well, we'll see what he comes up with. Uh, I think I'm good with you. So, uh, we checked our instruments. Yep, we're all good. Make sure everything is on green. No, I'm not yet. Oil pressure is still, uh, still down below the green, so. Uh, oh, but I can, uh, I can while I'm waiting, I'll put the uh, flight plan in. So, let's, okay. So, KPTW.
Make sure I got it right. KPTW. KPDTW. Is this text here? I mean, I'm I'm on a third. This is uh, my desktop of a 34-inch monitor, so this text is pretty small. So, so sometimes I have to lean in to read that, as opposed to uh, on my uh, autopilot. I don't have to lean in. I can I can see those letters pretty clearly. So K. KDYL. So, so it's Y. So if I go all the way up here, grab and spin. Whoops. That's not what I wanted to do. Back up. <laughs> so if I come out here and grab and then spin, that'll take me quite a ways up. So K. KTY. So that was Y. So it's way up there. X. Y. X Y. Lima. Oh, you do? Uh, give me a minute and I'll give you a suggestion. K-A-B-E. K-M-P-O Poconos. Yeah, so from right here, I can easily see that's a J, K, L, M, N, O, Poconos. So, so I am, um, so I wasn't like leaning in at all. I, I just was from my normal position in my chair. I just looked over and I could easily see that. So, uh. How is that possible for me? Uh, I have a high-end headset. <laughs> uh, my uh, my headset is uh, the Vipro 2, so it's 2448 by 2448, and I'm I'm uh, uh, I'm giving X-Plane uh, 2805 by 2805. So so it's a fairly high-end headset. What I found most important is the default position in a, uh, the default pilot position in VR in X-Plane is too far back. You're basically setting uh, almost with your back behind the seat. So, so you're further away than you would be in a real airplane. And so I adjust uh, this cockpit here, so this instrument panel, I adjust it to bring it forward. So I bring it closer to me. Hey Penny, how you doing? Good to see you. I haven't seen you in a while. <laughs> I um I'm getting a new uh, a new headset and um, my goal is that headset will work on Linux and I will be trying out your overlay uh in Linux so uh so I will uh and but I'm uh probably we'll say I'm a month month away from getting that headset yeah quest 2 I've never used one so I don't know how low that res is that happens <laughs> that happens so so what I do is I adjust this cockpit to make it I want it but you see my controllers 
I have my controllers against the desk, against the edge of the desk. So I have moved. Oh yeah, yeah, it's little. It uh, it weighs. Um, it's called a big screen beyond, and uh, so it's a Steam VR headset, and it weighs a hundred. This headset here, the way I have it modded, is about twelve hundred grams. The big screen beyond is 127. <laughs> so it's a tenth. <laughs> so. But I moved this cockpit uh, so that it is in front of my desk. So because of that, two things happen. One is I don't I'm not gonna touch my desk because I'm in front of it. The other thing that happens is this is closer to my face, closer to my headset. So it makes this easier to read. And this will work for any headset, but depending on what the resolution of the headset is, will be how readable it really is. You know, if it's not readable like that, then you may have to like lean in. But I don't, but this is what, how I judge it is, um, can I like just uh, look like this and actually read the numbers over here on the right hand side? If I can, then I'm good to go, so. All right. So that's all set. We'll, uh, so my first, uh, my first track is 54. So we got taxi lights on, plane's finally warmed up, and uh, I will uh, clearance delivery. Nope, that's not what I want. Hello, come on with me. So I'm gonna go on frequency. And uh, I don't want AWAS, this is what I want. I want Unicom. So basically when I do this, I'm gonna put Unicom in the uh, in the standby. So if I click on this, that's gonna be active. Click on frequency, put that away. Say weather. Cessna 6 Bravo Golf weather at Kilo Mike Quebec Sierra is clear. Visibility is 10 miles, winds are 321 at 14 knots, gusts to 20 knots, cloud coverage is clear. Current altimeter is 3009er. Temperature 212.10. Okay, okay, yeah, yeah, so that's, um, yeah, so that's quite a bit, quite a bit under. Yeah, that's quite a bit under. Uh, can you super sample? So in other words, can you try to make the, uh, tell it to, um, to use a higher resolution, does that work on the uh, on your quest? I mean, that's the that's the other thing you can do, and sometimes that sometimes that works to a certain extent. So, <laughs> Benny, what you flying? You're flying on the Microsoft Flight Simulator, right? <laughs> yeah, I would try that. I mean, it's called super sampling. So basically, you're telling the headset to to uh, to uh, to uh, um, to display a higher res. So uh, so that's that sometimes helps. Uh, other times it does not. So okay, look, we got no tower, so uh, I'm in charge. So uh, I need to find out what runway's active. Say active runway. Cessna 6 Bravo Golf arriving and departing runway 29er. Look it up. So, 29's how I, w uh, when I landed here, I had my heading bug on 29, so I can uh, go see if I can find it. Uh, we'll stop for a minute here. So, let me. So, I have an airport chart here. So, I'm right here, two nines right there. So all I gotta do is go out and, uh, I'm gonna left, I think. <laughs> we'll find out, I think it's a left. And uh, kinda go from there, look it. And I am running the, uh, the reality expansion pack, uh, default Cessna 172, so uh, it is, uh, it's realistic, so if I do, uh, if I do dumb things, I, I pay for it, so. 
Alrighty, the runway's there, and I think I gotta go this way to get to the taxiway, if I remember right. I'm gonna come out here and put my nose out. Yeah, because that's a dead end there. I can't get... There's uh, So, over there, I can see the blue lights. That's a taxiway there. So, I got to go this way so I can get onto it. Because if I go that way, there's a dead end. There's no way to get to that taxiway going over there. So. Come on. Must have been uphill. <laughs> it's like, why, why do I have to give it so much power? Must have been uphill. <laughs> Excuse me. Yeah, so, so far in, uh, in X-Plane, uh, 1206, uh, been, been pretty happy with VR. It's, uh, it's much improved. So. Because for a while, I wouldn't even, uh, I wouldn't stream it. I was just like, no. <laughs> if I'm not happy, I'm not going to, I'm not going to show it. <laughs> so, oh, i got to be pretty close coming up here. Yeah, there it is. Okay. So, we'll get on the taxiway here. And if I, uh. Do this right. Yep. So the uh, so my heading bug is down in the bottom. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. We only have like a few clouds today. Well, we'll see. We'll see how the clouds look. But uh, um, the last couple of days I've flown, we've had a lot of clouds, and uh, it really. It really showed it off. I mean, which is one of the biggest improvements of uh, uh, 1206 is clouds. Is that they are they are nice, and probably for most of the uh, whoops, hang on, Bill. Trying to get rid of some thrust here. Uh, and the other thing that, that started early in 12 is, uh, is the weather is, um, it's dynamic. So, uh, so you'll see as you fly, you'll see weather fronts as you're flying. So, okie dokie. So I'm going to stop right here. Put the parking brake on. Taxi light off now. Strobes. Landing. Okay. Trim set for takeoff. We'll uh, put the mixture all the way in. So we'll kind of do a quick look at the uh, at the windsock there. Yeah, yeah. We got a little bit of a crosswind by the looks of it, but uh, the winds are a non-event. All right. Get going here. So we're on runway two nine. Give it full power. Use the rudder pedals to uh, keep it uh, <laughs> dry. Keep it straight down the runway here. Airspeed's alive. We can fly. So this little indicator here, this is my rudder pedals. And so if I uh, if I shove in on the right rudder pedal. You can see that goes over. If I shove in on the left, you can see that goes over. So, and the uh, the two in the middle, those are the uh, the brakes. So, uh, so uh, my camera shows my yoke, my he my head, and my yoke. So you can see the adjustments I'm making, trying to uh, um, trying to keep the plane on uh, on the on the runway. Uh, runway center line and uh, 
and because my feet are in underneath the desk, you can't see them, I created this plywood Lewis strip to basically um, track where my where my rudder pedals are, where the uh, left and right is, and where the brakes are. So it's worked out quite well. I kept reducing it in size until I got it underneath the uh, compass. So it's about the same height as what my um, landing rate, what, what the landing rate strip is. Okay, got to be on a heading of a 54. So that means we got to turn some here. So I can pull the power back a little bit. I'll go back to about 2200. So I'm not just firewalling this thing. So. Um, I have, um, on my first flight of this trip, not this particular trip, but the trip around Pennsylvania, I, I failed an engine. <laughs> I failed an engine, didn't make it to my, uh, to my final two or three airports. So uh, I, to this day, don't know what I did wrong, but I did something wrong. <laughs> uh, basically took two cylinders out of the engine. So it's kind of like, oh, that's not good. So, all righty, I'm uh, pretty close to one uh, on, so I'm going to go nav, nav. So basically, uh, that put me on uh, on GPS. So the plane is going to fly on. Uh, it's going to fly to the next airport. Should be on a heading of a zero five four, and, uh, and it'll take it a little while to uh, kind of come to the. Uh, uh, I guess there's the airspeed drop in just a little bit. Um, so that'll that'll put it on a heading, and then it'll fly it'll fly me to the uh, fly me to the next airport. I can see all these rings. These rings are from Philadelphia, so so I'm close to it, and uh, but uh, but we're going to be flying away from it. So. Okay, so once the plane kind of gets up on the. Uh, up on here, uh, up on that magenta line, uh, then it should start turning. It's almost like it's almost got to get the wings on it. And that'll end up putting the magenta line right on the, right in the top. Well, that's what it's supposed to do. There it goes. So the little white plane has to basically, it almost is like the, um, it has to be, the magenta line has to be in the center of the airplane before it starts to turn where it's going to put the magenta line straight up. So the scenery I'm using is, uh, I'm using X-World. Uh, I think it's version 3.0 right now. And I'm also using Global, uh, Global Force version 2. I am using no ortho. No ortho for XP. I, I am not using any. Uh, because the uh, shoreline stuff is, um, Laminar Research hasn't documented how the shoreline stuff is working on, in the current version of X-Plane. Uh, so it can't really create a tile that will work correctly if you have any shorelines. And uh, I live on the uh, shores of Lake Erie. <laughs> I have a lot of shorelines, so uh, I've chosen not to use that until, uh, until I can create new tiles that will uh that will work with it so, so that's kind of where i am right now so all right got uh, 17 miles to go to the next airport sounds like i got a little bit more power than i need just looking at where the trim wheel where the uh, trim indicator is so So I usually cruise at around 85, 90 knots, somewhere around there. I don't try to, I don't try to cruise real fast. 
happen. But yeah, all in all, uh, I'm I'm happy with uh, what I see out the window. And uh, the one thing I am doing is I'm not using zinc. Uh, I have it uh, un unchecked. And uh, what I found is I would get micro stutters with it. And uh, so I unchecked it, and that's how I'm running right now. So, and I, so I'm running with the uh, the Open XR uh, option. I am running with that. And uh, so I couldn't do that for a few versions of uh, 1206 until they uh, they got my uh, my valve index controllers where I can see them and where the heptics were because because uh, both of them weren't working. So not only were they invisible, but when I when I highlight like that, I can feel that in my controller. Well, neither one of them were working, so it made it trying to use them in a VR uh, difficult. <laughs> so let's see what temperature we got? 52. So it's a little cooler. I thought it would have been. And uh, so this is kind of where where my uh, where my stuff is. So. I pretty consistently run 45 frames, pretty consistent on the GPU, so uh, that's real consistent with running native resolution of the headset, so I'm happy, and uh, so the frame time, GPU frame times are, they're right in that range, they're between say 10 and, 10 and 14, somewhere, somewhere in that range, so. And that's all, that's cool. I mean, that's all, I'm pretty happy with that, so. And let me go here, here, hello. So that's basically where my graphics is. As I said, I'm not using this thing. So uh, I got 3D vegetation, we're up at medium. Uh, I'm running next world, I wanna see it. So that's maximum. Rendering distance, high, not all the way up. Shadows, uh, I don't, this is just app for aircraft, that's it. I don't, um, I find shadows kind of kill VR a bit. Cloud quality, I probably could run this higher, but this is where I am. So texture quality, same way, I'm on high. Uh, I'm trying this at all the way up. And so far it's been working pretty good. Uh, this is basically off. Uh, up one notch, that all the way to the top. So that's basically what I got for graphics. Sometimes you'll, um, it's been interesting kind of like watching on the, uh, uh, on the org, uh, what people's, uh, impressions are of, of the current state of X.12. Uh, I will not, I will certainly say that every once in a while, I'll see some clouds that really look weird. <laughs> they, they just do. But what I will say is that's not the majority of what I see. That's actually rare. Uh, I've seen some, uh, eh, I don't know, it's probably three streams, four streams ago. Uh, I was flying in the area and there were some clouds that had, they were ignited, they, they were, uh, uh, what, the, what, uh, what I've heard the term and it sounds right, they were squarish. So in other words, they had 90 degrees. <laughs> so it was like, it was like an edge of a cloud that was like a straight line and then another part of it it was another straight line it was a 90 degree and you go where'd that come from i've never seen that in real life but but it was rare i mean i think i, I uh, at that time i streamed about two hours and i've seen it once so just in a, a specific place kind of like no idea what that was <laughs> so <laughs> No doubt, no doubt, and uh, but, but in general, I mean, when I look, look here, look here, look here, that looks great. I mean, that looks really, really good. 
And you can see the clouds are coming towards me. So I'm trying to figure out what those thing, two things are over, over on my right. I think I'm going to fly pretty close to them. So uh, we are. Uh, uh, where's my next airport? KPTW. KPTW. Field elevation is. Uh, we got no tower, so I better get on Unicorn. Unicom. Set COM1 standby, 122.70. COM1 standby set to 122.7. Okay. So I'm close enough, I'm going to go to Unicom frequency. Look like cooling tower. Say active runway for Kilo, Papa, Tango, Whiskey. Cessna 6 Bravo Golf arriving and departing runway 28. Okay. So, 28. Make sure I'm on nav. If you're on heading and you do this, um, you'll be you'll be in for a surprise. So, west is 27. So that would be 28. So the runway is kind of at a kind of at an angle. Yeah, those are cooling towers. Uh, we're seven miles out. I'll wait just a little bit. We're gonna land pretty close to them. Uh, yeah, we'll go buy him. We'll go buy him. We won't go buy him by much, though. So when I get about five miles out, I'll go ahead and uh, take it off an autopilot. Uh, elevation is uh, 300, so we're going to be 1300 for the uh, pattern. And uh, we'll uh, we'll do a left uh, a left downwind. Uh, we'll do a downwind approach for uh, for runway 28. How much runway we got? Ooh, we got a short one. 3,100. Not too bad. Certainly should be able to if I'm... If I know what I'm doing here, I should be able to uh, easily do a touch and go. Yeah, those are cooling towers, all right. Where are we? Are we someplace I know? Uh... Are we on Detroit again? We were on Washington. Hello. No, not Detroit. Let's be in the arc. There we go. Hmm. Nothing obvious. Okay. We gotta get some down out rid of some elevation. We need to find an airport. Those are really prominent landmarks. So this airport's right by these. <laughs> I mean, really close. Because if I... Uh, if I'm looking correctly, the runway's over there. You can see this white part that's like a circle, kind of like. I, I think on the other side of that, there's a runway. It's not real obvious right now. So this is called Pottstown. I knew there were, we were uh, there's a nuke plant at uh, uh, Berwick, but I didn't know about this one. There's a runway right there. Okay, so, uh, it's okay. 
Oh, the pilot does know where he's going. He has a flight plan. That doesn't mean he's following it, but he does have a flight plan. But but he is way too high. Yes, yes, yes. I am, uh, wow, I'm way too high. Uh, what do we want to do here? I can just go around the airport and get rid of some elevation. So, uh, normally, uh, right now, this is, this is downwind. But I'm, I'm like way too high. So I'm trying to figure out how I want to get rid of some elevation. Because right now I'm, uh, I'm 2,000 feet. Uh, well, we can do that. I'll just pull back some power. Whoops. One notch of flaps. Would this go a little wide? Yeah, I can make this happen. So I just basically pulled it back to idle. And uh, I'll just go out a little bit further than I normally would. Just to get rid of some elevation. Because my pattern should be 1300 and I am at um, 1700. So. But I can get rid of it. So. Nice golf course down there. Hook it up. We'll uh, go ahead and turn on base. Oh, I'm happy. <laughs> I'm really happy. Whoops! Pulled too much on the oak. You want to descend, Bill, so let it. <laughs> Alrighty. So sooner or later here, I'm going to have to put in some more power. Put power back in. There she is. Almost lost the uh, runway. Okay. Runway's there. So I can go out a little bit more. I'm going to put some more power back in. Because I'm kind of getting getting back to a place where I'm uh, pretty pretty good shape. So. Okay. Go ahead and uh, we'll turn here. Because I can easily see the runway over there. I'm a ways out. But uh, I'm at uh, 1,100 feet. That runway's 300 feet. So i got to get rid of some. And I'm uh, trying to get it into a, into a proper configuration. Oh, exactly. Exactly. And I can easily see from this far away... I can easily say that I had two reds and two whites, so. So right now, I'm a little bit high. Those went, uh, they went to uh, all whites now. So, I'm high, but um, we got, uh, probably come back. Whoops, not that much. There we go. We'll be okay. So, uh, because this runway is only 3,000 feet long, it's kind of important for me to land on the beginning of the runway, not uh, part way down. So I want to, I want this approach to be actually pretty good, and uh, so I want to be really close to the to uh, the surface of this runway when I come in here. And right now I'm high, so I'll probably pull back power just a little bit more. Looking at the runway, yep, no display threshold, so I can land. Uh, or only, it's just a really small display threshold. That little arrow there in the beginning of it, that's a display threshold, but it's small. Okay. We're going to be a little bit long. And I'm too fast. But we'll make it happen. Make it happen. Make it happen. That, that turned out that turned out really good <laughs> uh, I was too fast when I was coming in on approach I was about 80 knots and right then I should have been about um, 
65. So, so I had to get rid of some elevation. So as I'm coming in, I just pulled back on the yoke and then shoved down on the trim wheel to kind of, and that, that will get me, so it'll pull the nose of the plane up and, uh, and it'll bleed off airspeed, airspeed pretty quickly. And uh, so once I got down to 60, as you've seen, I was flying, I was flying right along the runway at 60 knots. Sooner or later, you're gonna run out of airspeed because the power was at, at back at zero, so. Uh, and that's exactly what happened. A little further down the runway than I wanted, but more than enough time to do a touch and go and get back up. Okay, okay, uh, what's our heading now got to be? It's like we almost got to go backward. It's like a heading of what? Oh, 86, okay. Eights are hard to see. Eights and zeros uh, look the same. It could be I just didn't have my headset right. Yeah, that looks way better. Okay, 86. Uh, we, uh, so I'm at, uh, at powder, pattern altitude, so I can turn to 86. Uh, which is the quickest way? Uh, so I'm at, almost behind me, so it doesn't matter. I'm gonna turn, I'm gonna turn this way. So when I'm turning, I'm looking at this uh, turn indicator. So basically what I'm trying to do is make sure that on the slower mark, I don't go past it, so. And that ball's supposed to be centered. As you see, it's not. Alrighty. Thank you so much. Thank you very much for stopping by, Hawker. Yeah, pull the power back to uh, 2200. So uh, we got 21 miles to the next airport. That's not too far. Looks like 11 minutes, so. So all these are pretty close together, and uh, I was just, I just randomly picked, uh, uh, so <laughs> what, what I was making, what I made sure of is that every one of them had a, had a paved runway. I don't, I'm not in the mood to land on grass, and uh, so, so let's make sure they're paved, they're uh, paved uh, runways, and they're basically kind of going up the, uh, uh, the border the uh, eastern the eastern border of Pennsylvania so so that's kind of the uh, kind of what my plan for the next uh, few flights uh, few streams will be so and get the show off uh, Pennsylvania I mean it's uh, it's not as wooded here as it is like uh, up in the middle of the state where, where I've been earlier it was way, way, way more woods, so. And more mountains, for sure, so. But X World, I think, does a pretty good job of um, kind of replicating uh, what's there, because uh, what X World is, as, uh, does is, um, uh, basically, it uses the, uh, Microsoft has a, I think it's on GitHub, but basically it's uh, footprints for, I think it's, I'll, I'll say it's most buildings. Uh, so, so you have the footprints, so 
if you know what the footprint is, you could put a you could put a building there and uh, kind of know that it's uh, it's right. And uh, so so that's kind of what what X World's been doing. So and it it seems to be to me it seems to be pretty believable. So. Okay, once again, uh, these airports that I'm going to don't have any towers, so so basically it's my responsibility to uh, kind of figure out uh, what's the active runway. The, the nice thing is, is that Pilot to ATC, if I ask it, it'll tell me what the active runway is. So it looks at it looks at what the weather is at that airport, and uh, and then it figures out what what is the proper what what is the correct airport uh, the correct want runway to be used. So. so so it says uh, there's an auto weather reporter from there. And it says the, wet, the winds are at 320. So, 320. Let me look. So, 33.32. And I have a runway of uh, 23. So, if I look here and I see the so 32s between 30 and 33. And you, and you look at where's the closest. So in other words, I have a runway of five. A five is way, way up here. But 23 is right here. So 23 is the closest. So more than likely, the uh, the active runway will be 23. But we'll see what they say. So, but that's how, uh, and, and quite frankly, when I was flying uh, when I was a student pilot, I could not make that correlation. It took me, <laughs> I won't say years, but it took me some time to be able to just live, just kind of look at it and go, that's what the winds are. These are my w runway choices. And it's real simple. Which one's closest? And, uh, and if they're really close, it doesn't matter. You could land on either on either end of the runway. It won't make any difference. But, but in this case, uh, yeah, 23 is closest. So. so I'll go to uh, that uh, Unicom frequency, flip it at about 10, uh, ask pilot to ATC what, uh, what the active runway is. So. Yeah, when I look down like this, I'm looking for micro stutters. Just really, really, really fast pauses. And when I when I have zinc enabled, I see them. When I have it not enabled, I don't. So this is actually, I mean, this is really smooth. So that's kind of what you're looking for. <laughs> no jerk. The only jerks I'll get is is with um, moving my headset. So every once in a while, when I turn my head, the the screen will kind of like stay here and then catch up. <laughs> so, but it, it doesn't happen a lot. It just happens every once in a while, like right there. That was that was a tracking error, where uh, where all the the plane kind of like jumped jump, jumped a little bit. So that's a tracking error. <laughs> And no idea why. Because I had some base station errors yesterday and I tried to I tried to look in the steam logs and I could not I couldn't find I mean the the error actually like 
it basically shut down the tracking so it stopped it and uh but i could not find it in any log i looked at i couldn't find it so i was a little disappointed but i also looked i also think that it was just that uh, i didn't know where to look All right, so we're less than 10 miles out. Yeah, I think there is, you know, but uh, but in general, I have I have pretty good luck with it. So, but uh, but when I when I switch over to the Linux version. I may, I may agree with you, <laughs> so, because right now I'm using the Windows version, so, and I don't know how different they actually are, so. Say active runway. Cessna 6 Bravo Golf arriving and departing runway 29er. Say active runway for Kilo Delta Yankee Lima. Cessna 6 Bravo Golf arriving and departing runway 29er. Say weather for Kilo Delta Yankee Lima. Cessna 6 Bravo Golf weather at Kilo Mike Quebec Sierra is clear. <laughs> Visibility is 10 miles winds are 331 at 11 knots gusts to 18 knots cloud coverage is clear. Current altimeter is 3009er. Temperature 222.10. This ain't going well. Yeah, I, I find the same thing with windows, actually. <laughs> uh, why? One? Good luck. Oh, I got the wrong frequency. Setcom one one two two point nine seven five. Com one set to one two two decimal nine or seven five. Stay active runway for Kilo Delta Yankee Lima. Cessna six Bravo Golf arriving and departing runway two three. Okay, I guessed right. I had the wrong frequency. <laughs> it matters. <laughs> so, alrighty. So we'll pull back the power. I'm about four miles away, so this thing's going to be pretty coming up pretty quick here. Uh, so I'm actually set up pretty close for a for a downwind approach. So this may actually work out. Uh, but I gotta I gotta get lower pretty pretty quick. Get lower. So 3.4 miles. Looking, looking, looking. It's over on my left a little bit. I'm Elevation is 394, so about 1,400 feet per pattern. I'm at 2,500. There it is. Does that look right? Yep, that's right. Airport's right there. I'm actually in really, really, really good shape. So we'll let her, let her descend a little bit. I'm gonna roll back. I got the power all the way out. So I basically pulled the nose up a little bit to lose some airspeed. So I won't, uh, <laughs> I won't be screaming in here. So, cause I gotta, I gotta get rid of the elevation. So if I get slower, I'll be better. <laughs> all righty. But you don't want to get too slow. <laughs> yep, 
perfect. How much runway we got? Oh, this one's even shorter. This one's uh, 3,000 and four. Some, uh, some building cranes down there. That's pretty cool. <laughs> I like when, when that kind of stuff is modeled. It, it's so cool. You know, that it's kind of like, yeah, that's what you'd see in real life, so. All right. I'm going to bring it back up to about 1,500. Maybe a little more. Maybe 17. Uh, kind of arrest my uh, descent. I'm I'm at pattern altitude right now, so I'm good. So I'm on the downwind of uh, runway two three. I know that because the uh, the heading bug is on the bottom, and uh, and I'm at the right airport. <laughs> So I'm uh, doing about 75 knots, which is really good. So kind of where uh, where I need to be. So uh, I'm probably at the right uh, power. I'll pull back just a little bit. One notch of flaps. I want that to descend just a little bit here. Actually, 500 feet a minute is what I want. Still at 75 knots. Looking, looking. Oh, we should be good. Alrighty, so I'm gonna add a turn. Second notch of flaps. Make sure the nose continues to drop. Whenever you turn like this, it's kind of easy to try to pull back on the yoke. And when you do, you lose airspeed. So, and also the same way as if you turn too steep, same thing, you'll lose airspeed. So, heading bugs right there, runways right there. So that is lined up. So I'm uh, about 700 feet above this runway, above this airport. So I'm a little bit high, but not a lot. Looking pretty good. Go out just a little bit more. Okay, we're good. So we'll turn it on final. 1500. Got two notches of flaps out. All right, pull back power just a little bit here because I'm a uh, bit high. I think I can pull it all the way back. Went back. I'm high, way high actually. We'll see how this goes. I'm all, I got the throttle all the way out, so we're coming in. So I, I was coming in at 80 knots, that's way too fast, but. I do a go around. Nope, just didn't have it. I hadn't gotten rid of enough altitude, and uh, there wasn't enough runway for me to do a touch and go. So, throw the power in, do a go around. So, hey, church. So, I'll just try again. Hello, Iowa Scotsman. How are you? I just had to do a go-around. I was too high. And I didn't have enough runway. <laughs> All right. Pull power back to about 2,000. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, I was... Uh, I was better than halfway down the runway. I haven't got it on the wheels on the ground yet. 
but kind of like uh, if this ain't happening the runway here is 3,000 feet <laughs> so, so um, if you ain't got it down shortly after the beginning of the runway probably ain't gonna happen so alrighty so uh, I'm a little bit wide of the of the runway of the airport not bad though yeah, I'm okay so uh, we'll uh, we'll try this again that yeah, should do better next time okay so pull back 1700 or so See if I can do a better job this time. <laughs> okay, turn on base. Way better approach. Two knots is a flat chin. Wasn't quite on runway center line, but at least I kept it on the runway. <laughs> okay, gotta be on a heading of uh, 325. Yeah, that looks pretty nice. Yeah, actually, everything around here looks really nice. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, there's a challenge. Okay, three, two, five. See, my compass is a tad off here.
Yeah, maybe not that much. So we got two more airports to go. This one's 22 miles away. And the last one's 29 miles from that one. And uh, my, the last airport is Pocono. So if I remember right, that's got to be the airport's got to be kind of close to where the Pocono uh, Speedway is. So. So what do we got? Oh my goodness, we got a tower. Lehigh International. Oh my goodness. Got a tower and everything. That's neat. Let's see how well this works. Is it a real tower? Yeah, it looks that way. Sometimes it says tower and then it says some other town. And uh, I had one by Philadelphia that was that way. And uh, it didn't go well. It was not a real tower. <laughs> Philadelphia Tower may give advisories, but that was about it. Kind of nice to fly far enough where you can see different weather. So that's why I made the uh, made the flights about where I did that. Uh, the right around an hour flying time. So and then yeah, you know you have to add like if you flew right to it and then blew by it and never landed, you know then you don't have the time of the approach and doing a go around or any of that stuff so all right I had to pull power back a little bit when uh, when it leveled off the uh, rpm went up a little bit it's at com one standby one two zero point five zero com one standby set to one two zero decimal five all right For some reason, my pilot wait to see disappeared. <laughs> it didn't close because I can see it there, but oh, there it is. Sorry, I was just a little blind. <laughs> I was just looking to see if that uh, 
If it said it was the uh, tower frequency, and it does, so. So where are we in Pennsylvania? So is this a lake? Yeah, it looks that way. Yeah, more trees now. <laughs> As we start heading north, <laughs> we start getting into uh, up towards central Pennsylvania. There's definitely more trees. And generally will be more mountains too. A bit of a cloud bank up in front of us. Kind of curious uh, how low that cloud bank is. Yeah, unless Lee gets back with me with uh, uh, data reference tool, I'm going to have to write me a Lewis script to uh, kind of figure out what's going on with my uh, controllers to uh, see if I can figure out the proper uh, the proper mapping for, uh, for the animation. So I've looked at the file to kind of know what, uh, what I think is wrong and... Uh, but I need to, uh, I need to know, uh, what data refs are being, uh, what data refs are being used and what data refs need to be used to make it work correctly, so. Because I actually looked in, uh, X-Plane 11 in VR, and they're not, they're not completely working, actually, in, in 11. I just never, uh, I guess I never looked, <laughs> so. The controllers in them work right. The uh, button mapping works. It's just the animation, anim, anim, animation in VR that's uh, a little screwed up. So since this is a tower frequency, I'll see if I can uh, just uh, say weather and uh, see if it reports the weather for the uh, say weather. Cessna 6 Bravo Golf weather at Kilo Alpha Bravo Echo is scattered. Cool. 
Visibility is 10 miles winds are 302 at 8 knots cloud coverage is 5000 scattered. Current altimeter is 3004. Temperature 22.11. So, uh, if, uh, if the frequencies are right, uh, and you kind of use the right phraseology with pilot to APC, uh, then you can just do what I did. Just say, say weather, and it will report the weather for for the airports you have it dialed in for tower, even though I'm 10 miles away from it. And uh, so, so that way you know that you're, what you're, you have the right frequency. If it, if it come back different, then you, you, then you want to check your frequency and make sure that you're on the right frequency and, uh, and kind of go, kind of go from there, so. So what kind of runways we got? Alrighty, well we at least got reasonable runway. Say active runway. Cessna 6 Bravo Golf arriving and departing runway 24. The flying is doing awesome. B4 altitude? I probably got something wrong there. It is actually doing really, really great. I got two more airports to do a touch and go. Bad alt atti alt attitude. Okay, gotcha. Got it. Sometimes those aren't as easy as you would expect. <laughs> uh, I know the people that create them, they know what the intent is. Uh, with mine, uh, Sparker and VR, I, I, I get it uh, lots of ways. <laughs> And uh, basically, um, on uh, I'm an X-Plane user and write plugins for X-Plane. And uh, I hang out on xplane.org a lot, and I'm Sparker there. So uh, when I decided to start uh, streaming on Twitch, I, I was trying to find a name that was appropriate. And I went, and I was going to stream in VR, so I went, oh, Sparker in VR, that would work great. So I've been quite happy with the choice, so. Alrighty, I think I'm going to uh, get the autopilot off. Absolutely. Um, when um, gotta get my plane slowed down a little bit here. Um, when uh, X-Plane did native uh, VR. I think it will be Christmas five years ago now, I think. And uh, so, so I didn't have any VR stuff. I had shady cameras. And uh, I, uh, I kind of looked at it and I went, um, man, I don't know, you know. I said, I says, what I'm afraid of is that if I really like it, I'll get hooked. And, uh, and, and all my shading panels will be kind of obsolete. <laughs> so, um, so I kept, I was watching the feedback and uh, it, um, runway's right there. Uh, so, um, Cessna 6 Bravo Golf inbound to land, runway 24. Cessna 6 Bravo Golf, good afternoon. Altimeter is 3004, enter pattern on a left downwind for runway 24, pattern altitude is 1400 feet. Call downwind. Enter pattern on a left downwind for runway 24, pattern altitude 1400 feet, Cessna 6 Bravo Golf. Give me a second. I gotta figure out what I'm doing here. Let me look. Wrong way? Wrong way. Okay. How do I want to approach this? I'm going to go around around the airport. So, I'll pull a little bit of power in. And, uh... So that's 2,300. Okay. So I'm going to go around the airport and come back on the... on the left side there. And then I'll be set up for a downwind. So that'll work. Uh, let's 
something ain't right. That ain't the, that ain't the runway. There's two of them, right? Yep, there's two of them. That's not the runway. So when I'm looking here at 2-4, let me look when I, if I turn like this. Yeah. Uh, okay, so let me do this then. Yeah. I got it. But, uh, so, uh, when, uh, yeah, so the runway's going this way. I need to do a 180 over here. Uh, where's my altitude at? 2,000, I'll stay at 2,000. Uh, so, uh, to so come out on Christmas, I listen to people feedback, and, uh, people seem to really enjoy it, so I didn't have anything VR, so I, uh, I says, well, I says, let me, uh, yeah, they're gonna be gonna have to dance with some clouds. Um, so let me go ahead and uh, I ordered a uh, Vive, and uh, so I ordered it two days after Christmas. And uh, so uh, on January 9th, it come it arrived at my door, and uh, that that happens to be my birthday. <laughs> so so I kind of like thought, well, maybe this is an omen. I don't know. And uh, so I think I. I think I used VR for a week, and uh, I was using this uh, this configuration. I was using the uh, Reality Expansion Pack 172, and uh, I was in a hurry to take off. Didn't let the engine warm up. A thousand feet above the ground, the engine stopped. I killed it, broke it, and uh, so uh, I, I went. I was like a thousand feet, so I had just taken off from the airport, and I was out a little bit, maybe half a mile, and uh, kind of like when I. Uh, my training tells me that uh, uh, I uh, I should fly straight ahead and find a place to land this thing. I said, I'm in a flight simulator. Let's see what I can do. So uh, so that's what I did. I did a real gradual 180, landed the airplane, and uh, from that point forward, I never I never flew. In uh, I only flew in VR after that. So. Okay, let's see if we can find this airport again. I think I know about where it is. <laughs> yeah, that was priceless. So when I when I broke uh, when I broke the airplane, a couple of couple of, about a week ago now, uh, that was the first time. That was only the second time that I've actually broken the actually broken an engine. So. Looking, looking, looking. There it is. Almost missed it. There it is. Okay. So now we're downwind. So runway two four. I'm downwind. So I got a report. I pull the power back just a little bit. Cessna 6 Bravo Golf, downwind, runway 24. Cessna 6 Bravo Golf, call turning final for runway 24. Cessna 6 Bravo Golf, request touch and go. Cessna 6 Bravo Golf, winds are 302 at 8 knots, cleared for the option runway 24. Awesome. I'll cleared hear. touch and go runway 24, Cessna 6 Bravo Golf. Uh, generally, I can't do those calls together. Normally, I have to say it, wait a little bit, and then and then request a touch and go. If I try to put them together, half the time she won't even respond to me. <laughs> so, so, uh, so I, I try to break them up like that. So, okay, so we're doing 80 knots. We're uh, we're on the downwind, uh, heading bugs down here. So, we'll uh, runway's long. Runway's got to be. Runway 7,000 feet, almost as long as the runway in Erie, so, where I normally fly at them, so. I'm a little bit high. Uh, no, I'm not. I'm on the downwind, so I'm okay. All right. So I'm going to pull back on the power just a little bit. Put one notch of flaps out. Try to get the plane to start descending. Trying to descend about 500 feet per minute here. So you, so you basically get rid of the elevation you have. And try to keep it at 70, 75 knots right now. 
Not doing too bad. Yeah, I'm probably far enough. I'm a little bit wide, so I'm probably far enough. I'll be okay here. So, one more notch of flaps. Keep looking at the airspeed. She's dropping a bit. Wait until the heading bug comes back over right there. I'll put just a little bit more power in. Because I'm a little bit away from this airport right now. I'm probably okay, but uh, it just has me a little, a little concerned, that's all. <coughs> Excuse me. Just make it, just double checking my compass to make sure that uh, my compass and the uh, directional gyro are in uh, in agreement. Cessna six Bravo Golf turning final. Cessna six Bravo Golf winds are three zero two at eight knots. Cleared for the option runway two four. Cleared touch and go runway two four Cessna six Bravo Golf. <laughs> So when you when you make those turns, if you like try to turn too steep, then you can watch the airspeed just drop. So you kinda you kinda watch that and then you go, okay, well no. You don't need to quite turn yet, but so two notches of flaps are in. We got white pappy, so I'm a little too high. And try to put the nose up a little bit to uh, get rid of some airspeed. Got a displaced threshold. That's what the little the arrows are and the piano keys. So we can't land before that. We have to land after the piano key. But we're not landing. We're doing a touch and go. So. Airspeed's pretty good. Everything's fairly well trimmed. No hands on the yoke. Runway's long enough. I can let this run out a little bit. Don't need the force it just it's coming down. About four hundred feet per minute coming down. Close, close, close. Pull back on the yoke a bit. Oops. Almost too much. A little bit, a little bit. Still's got too much airspeed. Do a little dance on the pedals. Up we go. I'm glad you're happy. <laughs> One more airport to go. If you wanted to plant it right in one place, that wasn't the way to land it. But if you wanted to try to see how uh, how smooth you could land an airplane, that was the that was a technique <laughs> so because i kept looking i wasn't bleeding the air off i'm like what the heck why not and i looked it was like still at 60 knots i went well it's <laughs> 60 knots it's not gonna land i mean i and i think i probably i probably didn't have it trimmed with nose up high enough to uh to bleed off the air so it's bleeding it off a little slow <laughs> all righty next uh Next place to go is 17, so it's almost back the way we came. Uh, yeah, well, we'll, ha we'll turn left here after, uh, so I'm a thousand feet above, um, yeah. All right, let's we'll see if we can find the next airport. 
I'm going to pull back on the power now. Go back to about 2200 for right now. I want it to climb, still climb, but uh, it doesn't need the big firewall to do it. So. Yeah. Uh, I have I have a very nice joke, <laughs> so it it allows me to do uh, it allows me to make some of this look pretty easy because of the yoke. Um, so the uh, yoke I have, this guy right here, this is a fulcrum one yoke. So uh, I was at a a, a flight sim expo and uh, seventeen. Right about here, I think. Oh, no, 17. Okay, whoa. And, uh, it was the first time I seen a, or, uh, I seen a, a honeycomb, uh, alpha. And, uh, so I, I looked at it, I used it, and I went, well, that looks, that looks pretty nice, you know? So, um, uh, so I was, uh, and it, it was, I would have had to pre-order it. And, uh, so I, uh, I was looking, looking, you know, but I, I couldn't buy one, and uh, so, uh, so there was somebody streaming the uh, flight sim from uh, Cosford, and I seen this yoke being demonstrated there, and I looked at it, and I went, oh my word, I went, well, that's really nice, the, um, the dude that, that made this, he went out to real airplanes, and, uh, he, uh, he basically made the yoke kind of match a real airplane. So in other words, um, the throw of this is eight inches in, eight inches out. So, so when I'm like, like landing, you know, I, I can make like just such minute uh, changes to the, uh, to the pitch of the aircraft. It's just, I can just move it just a little bit. And, uh, and I can actually see the airspeed change and kind of like go, oh, that was too much. Just release it for just a little bit. And, uh, and it, it makes it, 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 it's amazing the difference it makes. So, so, uh, so I, when that one I could pre-order, I pre-ordered it. But right about that time, COVID hit. And, uh, so I probably had to wait at least six or eight months before uh, before I could ever put one of them in my hands. <laughs> so, just bad timing. So, I don't think we've turned enough yet. So, we got... Uh, Looks like 30 miles to, uh, hmm, whoops, let's not do that, bro. I'm right about 3,000 feet, and I just uh, probably shouldn't fly through that cloud. So I'll wait till I get by it, and then I'll put the autopilot back on. It was going to fly me right through the cloud, and I, as a GA pilot, I shouldn't be doing that, so... I'm like a little bit off course. I'm at uh, I'm at course 40, and I should be at course 17. So. What a slight edge though. That's kind of cool to look at the clouds too. They look pretty nice. So I wonder, since I'm flying to Pocono. Yeah, yeah, they're, I'm quite happy. All right, well, uh, we'll see how this goes. So since I'm flying to, uh, to the to Pocono airport, I wonder 
if the uh, speedway is modeled or not. I should be able to see it on the uh, on the sectional map. It should be on there. So we'll uh, before I actually land, I may may do a little sightseeing. So time is it? Oh yeah, I got time. Like the power was about 2400 I went back to 22 so. looks like feels good temps look good feels like I haven't broken anything and let's see what the map says about that I think I know what that is, and we'll see if it says it is. Yep. So, you see that down there where the water is? And the kind of uh, gray colored stuff? That's mine. So, if you look on the sectional chart, there's uh, two, two hammers, you know, kind of the uh, you know, rock hammers. There's two of them. So, we're actually flying right by it. Yeah, that's a nine. So, so it's kind of cool, you know, where you can look on a sectional chart and you kind of look down and you go, oh, okay, that's, yeah, that's where I am. So, so that is kind of, kind of cool because they're kind of, they're kind of scattered pretty much all through this area. So, and a lot of them, that one don't look, eh, it could be big enough. It's kind of flat though, so it's kind of, it wouldn't be. It generally wouldn't be like a, like a, like an, uh, uh, like a coal mine, you know, like a, a strip mine. It, there's no mountains around it, so it, it would be, un, be unlikely that would be from coal, for a coal, so. Because it doesn't say what they are around here. So if you look, there's like one there. Uh, where was the other one at? There was another one pretty close to here. You know, but they're like all through, uh, in PA, they're all over the place, so. This sounded like my airspeed was a little low. It's 80, it should be fine. Cool. So. KMPO. Yeah, we ain't got no tower here. <laughs> Alrighty. Oh, there's a mountain. Should be good. It ain't that high. give myself a little more a little more power and it's, and it's slowed down to like 2,000 so. and certainly no auto throttle on this plane so so Let me look. So let me. It's kind of blurry like that. All right, instead, let's do this. Kind of going in this direction. There it is. All right. So there's Pocono Raceway. It's 
So, we're going there. So, I think we will. We'll do a lot of sightseeing. So, the raceway is kind of to the, uh, to the left of, uh, of the airport. And, uh, yeah, KMPO, that's where we're going. We'll, uh, we'll see if, uh, if that actually is, uh, um, if that is actually in the sim. It'd be kind of cool if it was, so we'll find out. kind of funny you make a throttle change and then because you made a throttle change then the airspeed's going to change uh, because the airspeed changes then the actual RPM because because the prop is bolted right on the engine <laughs> so when the airspeed changes the RPM changes <laughs> so sometimes you have to adjust it more than once to kind of get it where you want it so Yeah, because the same way, as you pull the power all the way back, it isn't like the uh, the engine goes back like you would be on the ground up to, uh, like, six, between six and probably 800. On the ground, that's where it will go. When you're flying, it won't do that. It'll go, it may go to 1,000, but probably not much below that. So. Just because you're flying, so. And the wind's kind of helping the engine go around, so. Set COM1 standby 122.70. COM1 standby set to 122.7. Yeah. A little cloudy. Luckily, where I'm going, they're not in my way. <laughs> yep, so this is the, uh, my last airport for today. And, uh, I would say all in all, uh, everything went quite well. Uh, I was uh, way too high on one of the two airports before, and uh, kind of uh, kind of looked, and I'm I'm better than halfway down the runway, and the wheels haven't touched yet. So it's kind of like okay, <laughs> put the power full power back in, but make sure you keep a hold of the yoke uh, and uh, and get the flaps up. <laughs> so so what you don't want to happen is uh, have full flaps. And uh, then the plane, the plane ain't gonna, it's not gonna climb. <laughs> so, so, uh, so I just held the yoke uh, where it was, held it down, and uh, and then uh, got the flaps up, and then I was good to climb. So. <laughs> See ya. Hopefully you brought one. <laughs> Thank you so much for stopping by. It's been good to chat. Another ridge line up here doesn't look too high, so 
I, I did some, uh, it's been a few years ago now, uh, I did some flying in, uh, uh, in the sim in Arizona, and, uh, in the mountains in Arizona, they're big, and, uh, so what I, what I had learned is, uh, like that ridge there, I can see over that ridge, I can see on the other side of that ridge. If you can see over, over it, then you're going to be high enough to go over it. If you can't, you better climb. And uh, so these mountains are, well, what does it say? Uh, so, so that's 25, 23, uh, thousand. So they're not real high. Doesn't even look like any of them are 3,000. Where when I was flying in Arizona, they were between six and eight, <laughs> and uh, some of them were nine. And um, one thing I found out real quick, because here I'm not high enough. I really need to lean this airplane to get to get uh, enough power. Out there, yeah, yeah, you have to. Uh, when you're at, especially if you're at 9,000 feet, yeah, you better lean that guy back a lot to uh, to make sure, because what you're doing is, is the, uh, the air gets center, so all of a sudden you're running with a rich, a rich mixture, and it, and it doesn't it doesn't produce as much power. Actually, the, the engine gets kind of cooled down because of that, and uh, so, so you learn pretty quick that you better, uh, you better lean it back, but the problem is, is that Okay, well, I leaned it back. That's fine. I got landed. Especially if you're going to do a touch and go, you better remember that when you get done with your touch and go, make sure you put the mixture back when you, when you kind of give it full power or you won't have full power to take off. But sometimes you're high enough that even on takeoff with full power, you can't have it full rich or, or it, won't, it won't produce as much power as it can. So... So that was kind of like a balancing act of, uh, so we're nine, uh, we're nine and a half miles away from the, uh, uh, from the airport. So, uh, we got, we got that dialed in, so I'm going to flip it. Uh, go back to the airport. Actually, we're going to stay, we're going to stay on the map. So, let's, um, when we get close enough, we'll see if we can go find this, uh, so I'm eight miles from the airport, and, uh, let me take the autopilot off, and let me go see, let me watch this map, I'm gonna take the autopilot off. I will land at this airport, but not right now. So I'm going to try to uh, try to change my course a little bit. And see if I can actually see this uh, speedway. Say active runway. Cessna 6 Bravo Golf arriving and departing runway 31. Say weather. Cessna 6 Bravo Golf weather at Kilo Mike Papa Oscar is clear. Visibility is 10 miles winds are 313 at 1 niner knots gusts to 26 knots cloud coverage is clear. Current altimeter is 3005. Temperature 1 niner dew point niner. So I haven't quite turned enough yet. So it kind of looks like um, there's some uh, water. Uh, real close to the uh, raceway. So we're just going to fly at... Uh, 3,000 feet here.
Yeah, and it's just hard to say if they, uh, if the raceway would be, even be here. So there's water there. Looks similar. If this is actually here, I'd be, I'll be, <laughs> this will be pretty cool. <laughs> so that certainly looks like this water over here. And this racetrack kind of, kind of goes through the hills, so. So there is a very good chance. Is that what we have here? It's hard to tell. Nope, not yet. Yeah, I'd say this is it. Because that's got to be the garages. That's a parking lot. Now, to actually see the actual raceway, that may be more difficult. Uh, because, um... Because if I remember right, it just kind of winds through the, uh... The land here. But yeah, those are parking lots. I mean, huge parking lot. Been interesting. So we'll, uh, I'm gonna turn here. Yeah, the raceway itself, that's kind of hard to, hard to discern. Maybe not, maybe not. I think I remembered that building there. I think I remember that building. Yeah. Oh, that's pretty cool. I'm happy. I'm happy. Alrighty. Not bad. Not bad at all. All right. Let's go find our airport.
sell. Uh, so three one. Okay, all I gotta do is figure out where it is. Uh, it's like right in front of me. Thirteen hundred feet. I just want to make sure my GPS is working, so it is. Clouds are really looking nice. I'll pull back some power. I'm, uh, Like 4.8 miles away. Haven't quite, haven't quite seen the runway. There it is, over there. Pretty sure. Let me look. We got some water by it. We absolutely do. Alrighty. Yeah, it's right over there. I can see it. Yeah, four miles away. I can see it. Cool. Uh, two runways? Yep, two. Uh, 31. I'm supposed to land on 31? Really? Okay. Say active runway for Kilo, Alpha, Bravo, Echo. Cessna 6 Bravo Golf arriving and departing runway 24. Oh, okay. Four. Got it. Oh, cool. So, uh, all righty. Oh, this is nice. So, uh, that runway right in front of me. Uh, altitude 300. Uh, so, whoop, I need, uh, I'm at like 2700, so I'm too high. I'm gonna pull that power a little bit more. Uh, but I'm lined up, so when I uh, I follow this runway, when I get when I turn here, uh, I'm gonna be let, lined up for the downwind of runway two four. So. Say weather. Cessna 6 Bravo Golf weather at Kilo Mike Papa Oscar is clear. Visibility is 10 miles winds are 313 at 19 or knots gusts to 26 knots cloud coverage is clear. Current altimeter is 3005. Temperature 19 or dew point niner. Say weather for Kilo Alpha Bravo Echo. Cessna 6 Bravo Golf weather at Kilo Alpha Bravo Echo is scattered. Visibility is 10 miles winds are 302 at 8 knots cloud coverage is 5000 scattered. 
Current altimeter is 3004. Temperature 22.11. Seems like something's a little, a little wrong. I seem to be a little bit closer to the ground than I think I should be. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I'm glad I uh <laughs> glad I rechecked. Say active runway for Kilo Mike Papa Oscar. Cessna six Bravo Golf arriving and departing runway three one. Alright, three one. <laughs> glad I checked. I was looking, I was like that don't look right. Okay. So, um, this airport is uh, 1,916 feet. The airport I was thinking was 300 feet. <laughs> so, all right. So, let's see. Okay. So we'll uh, we'll get lined back up here. So runway three one. Pull back on the power now. I'll be okay. So, got two out, two runways. Okay. Yes, we do. So, how's this gonna work? So it's going that way. Okay. So, so I should be at. Um, Well, so it's about 2,900 feet, about where I am, so that's fine. This is downwind. So let me, let me go around. Get myself set back up again. Okay, I'm just gonna stay wide of the uh, wide of the airport here. Stay at around 3,000 feet. I'll go past the airport uh, to turn on to the downwind for uh, runway 31.
Awesome. Yeah, because I just happened to glance down and looked at the runway number and went, that didn't match. And then when I actually put the right airport information in here, I went, <laughs> yeah, one's 300, one's 1900. That's, uh, I was just looking, I was like, those trees are too close. You know, I don't care how far off my altimeter is, it can't be that far off. So. <laughs> Alrighty, this is looking way better. And the more I thought about it, it was the, the Pocono Mountains, I'm like, there's no, there's no way there's going to be an airport for the Poconos that's at uh, close to sea level. That's, that just don't make no sense at all. So, alrighty. better about this now what road is this like a four-lane highway here isn't it yeah yeah it certainly is it's not obvious on the map I think it's like an interstate or something way better now. Kind of skinny. Wind seem a little weird here. Trying to make sure I clear these trees. Okay, they're cleared.
thickest is a taxiway, but it's a little hard to tell. It is skinny. Yeah, I guess it is. Wow. This don't quite seem believable. Man, this is skinny. Certainly is a lot of little airplanes here. Yeah, I think I took an access road. <laughs> Alrighty. That's, uh... Okay, we made it. Trying to make sure I don't... Uh... <coughs> get parked in that spot but I don't want to take off the uh, take out the uh, taxi light perfect I went better than I thought it should whoops it had taxi lights on okay whoops well. Get to the way up? No. I thought I heard it cut off quick. <coughs> Alrighty. So we made it to Pocono. Yeah, and the, alt the altimeter was pretty close, actually. Closer than I thought. So 1916. Yeah. So that's really close. So that's cool. Alrighty. We're done. Uh, oh, it's fun. The clouds were a lot of fun and uh, kind of neat. Went to pine trees. Trees over here. Bunch of pines. Let's see. Let's uh, let's scoot over there. Kind of a cool thing of that plane now. Those are pines for sure. Yeah, you can see them. Yeah. Yeah, that's what a pine looks like. Bunch of them. Yeah, bunch of them. That's pretty neat. That is pretty neat. All righty. Back in the plane. All right. Uh, I'm going to call it a day. So, um, how long do we go? And 116. Cool, cool. And, uh, not bad. So everything actually uh, turned out pretty good? Yeah. I wonder why the, the frames seem a little, uh, a little low right now. I don't know why that's true. Hmm. Seems odd. It had been, like, in the about 45, so. Seems a little low right now, but that's okay. Um, so. Uh, I'm going to call the stream, and um, if you uh, if you enjoy this content, please uh, click on the follow button, and uh, so when I uh, when I go ahead and uh, when I stream again, you'll uh, get a notification of that. So, um, but we uh, so we're uh, we're now on the uh, eastern side of Pennsylvania towards the uh, eastern border. We're in the Poconos right now. And uh, so we're going to go up to the uh, northern border. And uh, then we're going to head over to the over on the northern border until uh, until I get back to Erie where I started this uh, adventure from. Uh, everything today, actually, everything went pretty good. I was a little concerned that um, yesterday I had some uh, base station errors. And, and I was afraid that in the middle of the stream, those were going to, raise their ugly head but one thing i did do is i changed the number of one of my base stations i had one that was one two and five so i changed a five to a three relevant or not don't know but uh that's what i did do so all right uh have a great day uh it's been a lot of fun for me and uh hopefully i brought some in uh some entertainment uh to people that watch this either live or in the future Bye-bye.